SpaceX is once again on the cusp of launching its massive Starship rocket from the shores of South Texas. The mission will essentially be deja vu from the mission plan laid out for Flight 9 that launched in May. Like Flight 9, SpaceX will not attempt to catch its Super Heavy booster back at the launch tower. Instead, SpaceX plans for Booster 16 to stay out over the Gulf and hover above the water for a brief moment before splashing down in a controlled manner. SpaceX is still using the Block 1 version of its Super Heavy booster and hopes to demonstrate its capabilities through off-nominal scenarios like using a metal ring engine to replace one of the three center ones normally used during the final stage of a landing burn. Teams will also aim for another controlled flip of the booster during the boost back burn following stage separation. SpaceX tried this for the first time during Flight 9 and said it proved successful. The idea is that by controlling the direction of the flip, the booster doesn't need as much propellant to perform the boost back burn. Instead, that can go towards lifting more mass to orbit on future missions. SpaceX performed a full-duration static fire test of Booster 16 back on June 6 to test the health of the vehicle. Flight 10 will be the fourth time that SpaceX tries to get a Block 2 version of its Starship to fly a nominal flight and make it to a splashdown in the Indian Ocean. The last time we saw this was during Flight 6 in November, which also was the last Block 1 version of the ship upper stage. SpaceX has several heat shield tiles on the Starship upper stage that can help the company get closer to its ideal design one that requires minimal or no refurbishment before flying again. In order to properly test those, Ship 37 has to make it through its nominal suborbital flight. SpaceX's attempts to achieve a good upper stage flight have been unsuccessful all year. Both Flight 7 and Flight 8 met with eerily similar fates. Ships 33 and 34 broke up over the Turks and Caicos Islands less than 10 minutes after liftoff. Flight 7 suffered from what SpaceX called a harmonic response prior to the conclusion of the first upper stage burn. Commentators on the SpaceX broadcast said that harmonic response was, quote, several times stronger than anything experienced during the previous ground testing. The harmonic response, in, the, in this case, it's essentially vibrations that we're seeing go through the structure. Rocket engines, as you can imagine, create an incredible amount of noise and vibration, which then passes through every component of that rocket. And on Flight 7, we saw those vibrations happening at a very specific frequency, and they were placing some extra stress on that hardware in Starship's propulsion system. This is most likely what led to propellant leaks that we saw that eventually cascaded into fires and ultimately ended with loss of contact with the ship. SpaceX changed some of the elements of the fuel feed lines to the Raptor vacuum engines and put Ship 34 through a 60-second static fire test. That was 10 times longer than previous Starship upper stage static fires. The fuel feed lines to the Raptor vacuum engines, which are unique to this upgraded version of ship, look like large straws running through the oxygen tank. Today's vehicle has one of the hardware configurations we tested in that extended static fire because it showed it was able to minimize the harmonic response and lower its amplitude or strength. We also took another look at where those fires broke out, specifically in what we call the attic. That's an unpressurized space between just the bottom of the ship's liquid oxygen tank and the top of those engine heat shields. Fires in that space resulted in a loss of vehicle back on Flight 2 and also on Flight 7. So we took some steps to make it more resilient to leaks in the future. Despite the changes, when Flight 8 launched on March 6, 2025, Ship 34 met a similar fate as Ship 33. This time, though, SpaceX said a, quote, energetic event in the aft portion of Starship resulted in the loss of several Raptor engines. About five and a half minutes into ship's ascent burn, a hardware failure in one of its sea-level Raptor engines took out that engine, the two remaining sea-level engines, and a Raptor vacuum engine. That's four of the six engines that ship has. This was a different failure than we saw on Flight 7, and the fixes that we put in place did work as expected. So this was a new issue on Flight 8. So welcome to Iterative Engineering. In its post-mission analysis of Flight 8, SpaceX said that a hardware failure in one of the center engines resulted in, quote, inadvertent propellant mixing and ignition. Extensive ground testing has taken place since the flight test to better understand the failure, including more than 100 long-duration Raptor firings at SpaceX's McGregor Test Facility, SpaceX wrote. To address the issue on upcoming flights, engines on the Starship's upper stage will receive additional preload on key joints, a new nitrogen perch system, and improvements to the propellant drain system, SpaceX added.
However, before SpaceX was able to get back to the launch pad for Flight 10, an explosion during fueling for a static fire test destroyed Ship 36 and the test site called Massey's along with it. After a nearly two-month-long analysis, SpaceX determined that its preliminary analysis of what caused the anomaly was likely correct. SpaceX wrote, quote, The most probable root cause was identified as undetectable or underscreened damage to a composite overwrapped pressure vessel, COPV, in Starship's payload base section, which failed and it resulted in structural failure of the vehicle, causing subsequent propellant mixing and ignition. The COPVs in the payload section store gaseous nitrogen for use in the Starship environmental control system. SpaceX said it would not only operate COPVs on future flights at a reduced pressure, but also add more inspections and proof tests before fueling Starship again. It also added new measures to try and detect internal damage to a COPV and updated its acceptance criteria. With the loss of the Massey's test site, SpaceX added a new temporary structure to the orbital launch mount, which allowed SpaceX to perform both a six-engine static fire test and a single-engine static fire test at the launch site. The single-engine test is designed to mimic the on-orbit Raptor engine relight that SpaceX has been unable to demonstrate since Flight 6 relight demo startup. back in November 2024, the last flight of a Block 1 Starship. Speaking of Flight 6, SpaceX is also going back to a fueling timeline more reminiscent of that mission. Instead of starting with liquid oxygen loading on ship and then proceeding to loading the liquid methane, the rocket's fuel, SpaceX is instead beginning with the fuel and then progressing to the liquid oxygen nearly eight minutes later. Also worth noting, starting the tanking process at T-53 minutes will also be the earliest that SpaceX began loading on its Starship rocket since Flight 3 back in March of 2024. Coming back to the present, SpaceX will also attempt to deploy Starlink simulators for the first time on this mission. SpaceX said that a failure on the main fuel tank pressurization system diffuser was the likely culprit for the loss of Ship 35 during Flight 9. The issue compromised the attitude control on that ship, which caused the vehicle to skip the payload deployment milestone. Liquid methane also entered into the ship's nose cone, triggering what SpaceX said were, quote, automatic passivation commands on the vehicle, resulting in Starship skipping the in-space burn and venting all remaining propellant into space. SpaceX has big ambitions for upgrading both the Super Heavy Booster and the Starship upper stage. The next version of the Super Heavy Booster will use a series of struts for the inner stage, which will remain attached to the booster. When doing hot staging, which is when we light the ship's engines while the booster's engines are still firing, the, the flame from the, um, from the ship engines can more easily exit through the uh, the open struts of the of the new interstage and in this case we'll bring the the struts interstage back with us instead of throwing it away the upgraded starship is designed to be caught by one of spacex's towers as seen in this animation shown during a recent company talk it will be powered by the third generation raptor engines as well it's this version of starship that nasa is counting on to launch several times in a row in a somewhat rapid succession to allow for an on-orbit propellant transfer demonstration. That will be necessary to support Starship missions to the moon as part of NASA's Artemis program. A version of Starship will also be used as the human landing system for the Artemis 3 and Artemis 4 missions. Speaking to the HLS, I think we've all been watching carefully as, as uh, uh, SpaceX has attempted their uh, last several launches not going quite to plan. Uh, the key milestone that we are watching for and everyone is watching for is when will they be able to demonstrate the uh, cryogenic propulsion transfer? Um, as we know, this is a very challenging thing to do. And um, we were anticipating that, that would be con completed by this year. Uh, clearly that is um, slipping. Uh, so we are anxiously watching for their, uh, their next launch to see if they're, you know, how they're making progress towards achieving that particular milestone. Speaking to a NASA social group ahead of the recent launch of the Crew-11 mission to the International Space Station, Sean Duffy, the Secretary of Transportation and the Acting Administrator for NASA, said that he wasn't worried about SpaceX's progress. SpaceX has this unique process where things don't work, things don't work, things don't work, and everyone thinks they're falling behind, and all of a sudden it's like they get to the goal line, right? So um, it seems like this is a similar process to what they've done in the past. They learn from their mistakes and then they uh, quickly, quickly get to the to, to the finish. And so, um, I, I, I talked to their leadership team yesterday. Talked to Gwen, 
they feel very comfortable on Starship. They feel like they're on page for the lander um, on track. So they, they feel very good. They said if there's a hold up for Artemis 3, it's not going to be them. I said, you promise me? And they said, yeah, I promise. It's not going to be us. Mm -hmm. So they feel really good. Time will tell how well or not things work for Flight 10, but with the Artemis 3 moon landing scheduled for less than two years from now, the pressure is growing for SpaceX to prove it won't be the holdup for America's return to lunar surface. Reporting for Spaceflight Now, I'm Will Robinson-Smith.